So talking about hypokinetic dysarthria, what can we understand from the name? Hypo means reduced, and that doesn't mean slow, it just means reduced. And then kinetic meaning movement, so it means reduced movement. It's caused by basal ganglia impairment, which we'll have a look at in a moment. And this is most commonly due to Parkinson's. Um, or Parkinsonism. Now, Parkinsonism is the name for uh, when someone has symptoms of Parkinson's but doesn't have true Parkinson's. So some examples, you could have the atypical Parkinson's, which are progressive supernu supranuclear palsy, uh, multi-systems atrophy, or corticobasal syndrome, or corticobasal degeneration. And I'm not going to write those out. Uh, also, Lewy body dementia, um, the other causes of Parkinsonism, and thus basal ganglia impairment. You can have vascular Parkinson's, meaning basically uh, some sort of infarcts of the basal ganglia. And you can have drug-induced Parkinson's. But that is less common now because the antipsychotics that cause, or most commonly cause that, are not used so much now. So the basal ganglia shown here are a group of different parts deep in the brain. And the basal ganglia help with voluntary movement. They're actually essential for voluntary movement. And they have a loop between themselves and the motor cortex. So they don't directly feed down to the signals. They actually go via the motor cortex. Actually, I'm not sure which one's the motor cortex in this diagram. And what they do is they take information, sensory information via the thalamus. And all of this is really complicated and there's probably other videos to explain this whole um, mess of feedback. But essentially, they take sensory information on what the body's currently doing and what the environment's like. And based on that, they either increase or decrease the motor movements, or they decrease and increase the signals. And so when there's damage here, or, or a lack of dopamine in the case of Parkinson's, when the basal ganglia are not functioning as they should, that affects the movement amplitude or range. And what I mean by that is the extent of the movement is reduced, so something like this. But usually what also happens is the frequency is also changed. So rather than, um, say, big steps, you get tiny steps and really close together. So some examples of this are in someone's gait. So if you have a look at these steps, they're quite small. Certainly not normal. The rate is not so bad, but definitely the, the amplitude is reduced. And you can see there he froze when he turned and they became more frequent. Um, skipping along to some other examples. And see the difference there between off and on medications. Levodopa is basically a miracle drug for Parkinson's and it can return a lot of function. Interestingly, doesn't make a huge difference to speech or swallowing. I mean, the jury's still out a little bit, but in general, you don't see like amazing changes after levodopa, whereas you do with walking or, or handwriting and things like that. So that reduced amplitude and, and frequency results in small shuffling steps. The same is seen with handwriting, somewhat like my writing when I'm trying to draw on this stupid graphic pad. So this is scaled comparison of normal writing of E-L-E-L-E-L, -E -L -E -L, and then this is the Parkinson's the person with Parkinson's with micrographia. Um, you can see it's a lot smaller overall, and they're also closer together. So the whole uh, amplitude and, and frequency of these movements are reduced. And there's kind of two parts to that. One is that the movements themselves are reduced, but also there's reduced input or feedback. So they're not necessarily aware, and particularly, almost always, the person with Parkinson's has no idea that their, their speech is off. And even if they do, they can't really change that by themselves. So they're either not sensing this in the first place, or if they are, they can't pass that on to the motor cortex and change their movements, at least not for very long. 
So what do you expect to see with someone with Parkinson's? Well, a lot of students will say tremor, and yet that's actually exceedingly rare. So you sometimes get some mandibular tremor, tremor of the jaw, or maybe lip, or very occasionally tongue, but overall it's not that common. And maybe part of that is that Parkinson's has a resting tremor, which means as soon as you make a movement, a voluntary movement, the tremor goes away. It's only while your muscles are sitting there and you're not doing anything that they tremor. So what do you see? Well, the first one is reduced volume. And this is the absolute hallmark of Parkinson's or hypokinetic dysarthria. Because the signal's not coming strongly, not amplified enough from the brain, um, you know, the voice is there, but it's not loud enough. The second one is dysphonia, and you get a very breathy, rough voice, particularly breathy. There is vocal fold bowing in Parkinson's, so that the closure is not as strong, and the thought is that that's due to, you know, the decreased amplitude of, of movement and decreased uh, force of bringing the vocal folds together. The next one is reduced articulation. So the movements of the tongue for articulation are reduced, so you... So rather than, for example, a nice strong T, if someone was to say tea time, the movement doesn't quite reach where it should, so you might just get sort of a lowered T, sort of tea time. Same with the lips, the movements just aren't very strong. Overall, articulation is not very clear, not very strong. It's undercooked, so to speak. And that's what I've tried to indicate with this diagram. So you get under articulation, which fits with the idea of reduced movement. Sorry, it really does look like a child's writing. And finally, you do get reduced intonation. So, instead of the normal prosody, the normal highs and lows of our pitch as we speak, uh, it's very reduced and you get a monotone sort of output. And some s sort of non-speech features that you also get with Parkinson's, um, you get masked face, so the facial muscles are quite rigid and you don't get a lot of facial expression and after a while you can actually start to recognise it quite easily. And there's also a disfluency associated with um, most causes of hypokinetic dysarthria, which I won't go into here. As far as what you'll see on AMR and SMR, generally they have difficulty spacing movements, so you won't get that nice even sort of output. So traditionally it was just thought that with Parkinson's, they'll just festinate, so they'll just get faster and faster with their sounds, but that's not always the case based on the research. Um, they may be quite slow, they may be faster, they may be quite irregular, so it's not necessarily a, a really good way to differentiate it. So if you put all of those features together, you've got reduced volume, you've got a breathy, maybe rough voice, unclear articulation, and monotone, you get someone that basically sounds like they're mumbling. And if I had a dollar for every couple I'd seen come in and one of them says he's mumbling and the other one says she's deaf, I would be very rich. Because adding to that, remember, people with this dysarthria often aren't aware that they're speaking quietly or, or can't sense it or at least can't change it independently. So let's listen to an example, a few examples of it. Louisiana. Louisiana. And what city? Yeah, yeah, so you can see his masked face, and uh, not much movement there, particularly the cheeks you, almost you seem frozen. Retired. You're retired, and um, lip movement is very minimal. Did, jaw movement where is did minimal. You work and what did you do before you retired? I joined the parish in a school in Bagram. But the overriding uh, feature is the volume and the soft voice. As a coach, I the program. You'll also notice he's fascinating his words, he's running them all together quite quickly. I also counsel many students and parents in school. I did school like the parents were. It is I brought people to God, 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 for the last four years before I retired. So Ken here, his facial movement is a lot better, but he's still got that soft, I I quiet voice. I, I, I was kind of campus early one day. I went in the restroom, it was like 6 in the morning, I was coming to work early. I went in the restroom, I had these restrooms already turned right and left again. Um, I, was, I couldn't get out of the restroom, I couldn't make a left turn, right turn. 
a bio, my mind wouldn't let me do it. So I stayed there for a bio, I stayed there for a week or... And as the text says there, that's not a normal sort of pacing of words. Fairly monotone. And, uh, so um, my wife, my wife has to be managed every two hours. Or Very fascinated speech. So it's pretty hard to keep up with me. Still soft. And, uh, I don't know if you've read the most recent part, article on, on, um, Parkinson's disease from People Magazine. Michael Fox, my name Michael J. Fox. Some disfluency. And, too many, too and his articulation isn't great either. And he's, he's taking too much medicine I'm taking. Now, Thomas. I'm taking some more, uh, some more different kind of medicine. Thomas uh, from Castle Future Tech has let me use these videos. Does. Um, and and I wanted uh, to point out the difference it when time. these uh, apps are used. Is, 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 so, this provides uh, delayed auditory feedback. So, you're hearing your own voice, there's a slight delay, and it just kind of disrupts, I believe, disrupts that feedback loop makes them focus more consciously on their rate and their volume. It seems to be able to improve the feedback. Changed my life. Man, it, for the minute that I tried it, I knew it was going to work. I don't know if you noticed when I turned That's it much on. To understand. It's immediate. But the problem is, it's immediate off too. So when I turn this thing off and in four or five minutes, I'll be right back to where I was. One downside to these is the effects are usually only while they're on and then a few minutes after. But you can see if you are that hard to understand, um, you know, that's totally worth it to leave it on. So that's one example. This one is an interview with Muhammad Ali. It's a hilarious interview because the whoever I don't know what jerk this is interviewing him, but he's basically trying to make his life sound tragic and make him upset for the interview. And Muhammad Ali is having none of it. He's just as positive as always. So have a listen to him. It has affected your movement. It has affected your speech. It has affected your facial expression. But it is not. <laughs> affected your mental capacity. So there is Does it bother you there. when you hear people say as they do, Muhammad Ali's masking. punch drunk? No. I didn't drink that much. Can you hear that Does it bother soft, you when people say, rough you know, you should have gotten out earlier, you are sick as a result of the punches? And it's actually slightly wet, the voice, which indicates maybe some pulling. You wouldn't come on here? No, because I'd be worried about what you ask. Articulation is quite hard to make out. at the old pictures of the fast talking, fast moving. You show me a picture of me. <laughs> you show me a picture of you and myself. And we look much younger than things, things change. Does your present condition upset you? Does it bother you? Uh, only a trial, trial for my life. This is such a trial. Trials in wealth, trials in pain, trials in failure, whatever. So. I don't know what he's in store. You view this as your trial then? Yes. How are you now, of course, these are extreme examples of hypokinetic dysarthria. In early stages of Parkinson's or after small stroke, they're not as obvious. But the more you come across it, the more you'll be able to pick it. So, what are the shortcuts for this? Basically, if you think reduced volume... And all of these features have in common shrunken movement. Oops, that is illegible. Shrunken movement, whether it's respiration, phonation, articulation, or prosody, everything's reduced, which fits with the name. And the other half of it is the rigidity that comes with Parkinson's. Which gives sort of frozen muscles. And that is, as well as the feedback, part of the reason you get masked face and under-articulation is there's a real rigidity of the muscles which doesn't allow them to move very well. As far as treatments, there's things like LSVT which can be very successful with the right patient. Um, you know, you can change the feedback as seen with some of those devices. Um, you can use things like pacing, pacing boards. Um, probably the first step with this is getting people to realise that they are that they do have a dysarthria, that there is a problem. And 
you know, one way around that is to ask them, do you notice other people asking you to repeat yourself a lot? And then they go, oh, actually, yeah, they do, but I don't know why. Or, um, you know, are you easily heard when it's noisy in a cafe or something? And they go, oh, actually, not really. People don't seem to hear me very well. So that's hypokinetic dysarthria in a nutshell. It's probably one of the easier ones to pick. Hopefully this has been helpful and check out my other videos if you're interested.